It gives us some challenges as organists because we're always trying to make arrangements of orchestral pieces, pieces for band, um, also pieces for solo instruments, for the piano or the harpsichord. But this piece is, of course, for more instruments than just one player. It's for an entire band of, 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 um, of wind instruments, percussion instruments, brass instruments. And within those, we have the trumpets, the trombones, the tubas, the French horns, the saxophones, the oboes, the clarinets, the flutes, the piccolos, the bassoons. The, um, the challenge is how to combine all of those into a pipe organ um, that really does have all of those sounds. I've mentioned this before, but we have um, sounds that, that imitate those instruments. Here's a French horn. And here's another French horn. Here is an English horn. Here is an oboe. Here's a beautiful clarinet. And here is a set of bagpipes. You always need those for an orchestral transcription. Sounding suitably out of tune on this lovely summer's day. Um, I should tell you that the weather outside is absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful blue sky. It's about 80 degrees. Um, and so I hope at least some of you are watching this from the comfort of your outside areas where you're able to enjoy the sun and the music. Um, but back to this transcription. So we have all those instruments in the orchestra, all those instruments on the organ. So how do we decide how and what and why um, to play? We won't get too philosophical today, but I'll show you some ideas that I have. So this piece is famous because of the melody. The first time the theme comes up in what's called the trio section. So not right at the beginning, sounds like this. Etc. Legend has it, I think, that Sousa heard somebody whistling that melody, and so he incorporated that or a version of it, who knows, um, into the final version. Now, what he told the press, this is from the composer, from the horse's mouth himself, is that that was to represent the northern part of the United States. So it comes up three times, very important. The third time, it adds a very famous piccolo lick, a piccolo melody, um, and we have a wonderful um, stop on this organ called a piccolo. So I'm able to select that. I probably would use something slightly different, perhaps more like this. So that gives that nice um, piccolo sound, and that's combined with the melody. I think it's played by the wind instruments in the score. Etc. Now, the third time I mentioned it comes up, so that second time, this is meant to represent the southern part of the United States. We have the north combined with the south, and at the very end, if any of you have played in a military band or a marching band, you'll know that the, the trombones have a very important part at the very end of this piece. Um, the trombones are often played, they're bass instruments, really tenor instruments, so I'm going to play them with my feet, of course no hands, and it sounds like this. <laughs> change a few notes to make it work because I only have one foot um, that can play that melody. The other foot has to play the bass part. And so what I thought it would be fun to do is show you how I put this arrangement, which I will be the first time performing it this, um, at this concert, so in a week's time. Um, and here is the, the first time that melody comes up. It's pretty simple. Um, I have to find what settings I am on. So I'm going to go down to the level where I've saved all the sounds. Um, so this is what it sounds like the first time. So it's just the melody, just the north. So you see 
that I've got my bass in the foot, the beat, and I have my accompaniment in the left hand. So for most normal people, that would be enough. You have your melody in one hand, you have your accompaniments in the other, and you have your bass part in the feet. Um, but us organists, there's, there's something wrong with us, and we always try and make things more complicated than they need to be. So I mentioned that's the first time. The second time the melody comes up, we have the tune, and we have, which is the north, we have the piccolo melody, which is meant to be the south, and then we have to do the bass part, and then we have to do the accompaniment. So there are a few little fun ways that I did that. Here is how I do the bass part. So I'm gonna play it with my foot. Oh, I just noticed there's a stop missing. Um, as a pipe that's not playing, we'll get that fixed by next week. Um, and then I add the accompaniment with my right foot. And then I have the melody with my left hand. Oops. Um, and then I have to play the rest of the accompaniment with my other hands, but I can't play the accompaniment on the same keyboard. That would sound clumsy. So what I actually do is I play one part of it with one hand, with my thumb, on one keyboard, and the rest of it on the keyboard above. And we call that thumbing down. It's very useful in pipe organ transcriptions. So now we've got the accompaniment in the left hand and the pedal. We've got the bass part in the left foot. And we've got the tune in the left thumb. But you'll remember there's something missing, and that's the piccolo part. So that's what my right hand is for. So the right hand plays the... So I'm going to combine them together and you'll see how we get to this. So here is the bass, accompaniment, and the melody. And the melody with the piccolo part as well. Etc. Um, but then at the very end, we have all of those bits plus the trombone melody. So how on earth are we going to do that? Well, it's the similar kind of thing. The piccolo is in the right hand. Sounds like this. The tune is in the left hand, um, on the thumb, left thumb. And then the accompaniment is in the left hand up on the keyboard here. left foot, and the, um, the trombone part, which represents the west of the country, so it's all three brought together at the end, the great union of the United States, sounds like this. So if I combine all those together, you'll see why we are such crazy people, us organists.